Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Lots of amps here in for repair, just waiting on parts. They're all over the place, they're behind me too. So, I'm going to work on the 6 meter amp for a little bit. I'm waiting on FedEx, he's bringing more stuff today. I'll get back on, he comes early luckily, so. A nice guy, real nice guy, I love using FedEx. So, um... Anyway, so I got the two filament transformers. These are new. So, as you know, I said I'm putting them in parallel. Uh, this will give me the current I need. And uh, they're, they're actually 36-3000A7 transformers. Uh, the output 7.5 volts. So, because I have extra current, I can turn down the primary slightly to match it to the 7 volt requirement at the current needed for the 6000. And you uh, can also do the voltage management per carrying and feeding of power grid tubes so I can maximize the cathode emission life well the customer can so what I'm going to do here is even though they're identical identical part numbers I've seen situations where they wound them backwards so uh, before I install them I'm going to make sure that they don't buck um, but okay so what I'm going to do is the primaries are in parallel I uh, put on the 1 and 5, that's a 250 tap, doesn't really matter. I'm going to feed uh, my 120 Variac in. I'll know right, right away, I have a 1 amp fuse. So if they're backwards, it'll pop the fuse. Um, uh, secondaries are in parallel. So I got the Variac over here. I got my voltmeter right here. I forgot to plug the Variac in, so I have to do that real quick. I'll have to stop the video and start it again. And, uh, you know, so, okay, so I will be right back. See you soon. Okay, so... Got the Variac plugged in. And I turn it up just a little bit. Okay. As you can see, voltage comes right up. So they are not wound in opposite directions of each other. So uh, what I'm going to do is I will mount these and get everything wired up. Uh, to keep the current equal amongst the two, what I'm going to do is I will jump them together. I'm going to use number four. I know it's overkill. Probably eight would probably be fine, but I have a roll of Teflon number four wire. I have a million ring terminals here, and I will strip, slide some heat shrink on, crimp, solder, then shrink the heat shrink over the terminals. I have quarter inch hardware. I have a baggie with all my hardware. And it'll be a bolt, a terminal, split washer, not tight, not real tight. Um, and uh, the uh, leads going to the RF deck will be connected. Uh, okay, so parallel, 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 parallel. One side will be here, and then the other side will be over here. So it'll keep the current equal. And uh, what I use for the wire, which you'll see, for the going up to the RF deck is super flexible wire. It's like welding cable wire. It's double insulated and it'll go through strain reliefs um, to go up to the top, which has the super con connectors. So, okay, so I will be back. I will see you soon. Very, very soon. Stay tuned. If you like, hit the subscribe button in the meantime and share it. You know, let other people know about it. But, okay. I'll let uh, other people know about my videos. That'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, I'll be back. See you soon. Okay, so the Teflon jumpers are made. Crimped, soldered, heat shrink. I'm going to pull the transformers out. I'm going to jump everything. I'll drill the holes. Well, I'll mark the hole spots, drill holes in the, in the metal and the wood. And you have to pre drill for the holes, for them, sorry, for the screws. And I'm going to take them out, jump them out here, and uh, connect the leads for the secondary also. So it'll be a lot easier than going in there with wrenches and my solder iron and all that stuff. So, all right, so I'll be back. See you soon. All my transformers have been paralleled. The center tap side, a little quarter inch hardware, bolt, split washer, nut, super tight with wrenches. So Teflon cathode return wire, Teflon wire there, Teflon wire here. This is number two, double insulated high strand welding type cable. It's super flexible. So this is marine slash automotive, just really good stuff. High, high temp. Um, uh, 
primaries have been parallel, this will all get zip tied. I have to run the one lead over here because it would end up interfering with the uh, variac. I'm going to on the 250 tap. It doesn't really matter. He could have could have been on the 240 also, but he has the variac. So that'll lower the voltage slightly to begin with on the secondary side. So, so I'll be back soon. I just have to drill, pre-drill the holes through the cabinet and the wood, and then I will mount these, and I'll show you it when they're mounted, wired, and the grommets are in for the feed through for these wires. So, you know, I got these really hot crimp soldered heat trunk, and with my big Weller soldering iron right there, and the installation didn't deform at all. This is just really good cable. I love this cable. So, very, very high strand. So, okay, I'll be back soon. See you soon. Okay, so the filament transformers are installed. Wired nice. Oh, nice. They are secured to the floor. Everything's soldered really well. Zip tied down there. Sorry for that. Hit the side of the camera. So, I'm going to vacuum this out really well when it's all set. I have a little tiny nozzle. Um, so, you got the secondary leads, got the return. So I need to get new feed-throughs. The ones I bought uh, won't work. Uh, it's going to have a little tiny banana type plug for the cathode return and it'll have a wire wand resistor between it and the chassis. There's another one up top. So gosh forbid the wire going from the bottom to the top is unplugged. The cathode would not float. It would end up going through the chassis. I have two studs. That one's missing. I was um, in a rush this morning and I was short one washer, grade 8, so it'll have a ground going from the back up to the top with strap, another one over here, and it'll have the ground around the B positive, and there's also ground in the SOOW cable, so it'll have four grounds, and the B negative goes through the SOOW cable, which isn't shown. Okay, so that's about it for now. If you like the video, please hit the like button and appreciate it if you share it with your buddies and uh, subscribe. Lots more to come. Uh, FedEx dropped off a pile of stuff. Uh, and uh, actually, I want to show one thing after this. I'm going to show a clip of something. I'll put it in the description. It's a surprise. From my buddies over at Penta Labs, awesome company, great customer service, just stellar, just impeccable customer service. I need to get two bolts. These are just temporary, a quarter inch. I just hold them in place. And uh, that's about it. Ground also connected, like I said. Getting, getting there. Not the bleeders here, diodes here. Um, it's getting a fuse in series with the B positive also I had I decided on that and it's getting the series glitch resistors so you see all that <laughs> okay so I'll be right back with the surprise see you soon all right so let's see how Penta packs a tube a ceramic tube I've been buying ceramic tubes from Aconco and iMac for over 20 years now this is my very first ceramic tube that Penta sent me. I asked if I could get one to do some tests with. And uh, they said sure. So, let's see. So, I'm going to test this amp with this tube. And also it on my high pot test and all that, but I'm going to do that in a different video. Ooh. Okay, so comes in a box like this within a second box. Lots of padding. Very good, a good grip on it. Penta Laboratories 36 6087. Okay. Looks 
like the ceramic is glazed. It's actually a plus. I'm not used to do that back in the day. But then they stopped. Okay, so nice 3CX 6087. Thank you. Thank you, Scott over at Penta and the CEO and everyone else. Oh, wait. Sorry, another phone piece goes in here first. So I always leave the tubes in the box. They're safe in the box. I'll put the box underneath my workbench. Okay. So, comes with the tester port. Seven volts, only three amps, 5,000 volts anode. So, you know, I'm gonna do a high pod test on my hypotronics. I've seen other people do it with, you know, uh, some other type of transformer, current limited or whatever, but they're not, I believe they did it with AC. You're supposed to use DC and you're supposed to reverse the polarity between the elements and short one element to the other. Uh, when you're, you know, like this tube, you go between the plate and the filament, and you're supposed to short the filament, I'm sorry, between the plate and the grid, and then have a short across the filament. Yeah, plate and grid, and then, sh I'm sorry. <laughs> I get up early, I'm tired. Okay, so between, when you're testing between the plate and the grid, then you want to put a short between the grid and the filament. And then when you go test between the uh, grid and the filament, you want to have a short between the grid and the plate, per IMAX specs, you know, or procedure or whatever, and then you want to be able to reverse the polarity. The idea is if there's a broken wire, you want to be able to pull it one way or the other. And uh, so that's about it. So if you like the video, like I said before, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe and share it with all your buddies. I'd really appreciate it. I am tired and I'm done for the day. I have tubes and stuff to test the other amps with, a couple that are done, and I don't normally work on the weekends, but I'm going to test one tomorrow morning so I can get it out of here. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day. 70.